All right. Um, so we're going to talk about heating curves. This is the last topic um, prior to the test. And so um, heating curves are a little strange um, because they don't do what you think they would. Um, for, so, so let's take an example of um, water. So let's just say you have water and you're heating it up. And so you might expect the, the temperature or excuse me, the graph of a heating curve. So let's just say this is the temperature and this is the time. So as the time increases, you would expect the temperature increase, right? So like if I continue to add heat to this water, I would expect it to look like this, right? But there's more going on, uh, actually. Um, and so um, what we're going to talk about is why does the curve look a little different and what's happening at each section of the curve. So the heating curve of water, and actually for any chemical, looks like this. I mean, the question we got to ask ourselves is, like, we understand that the temperature goes up as, the, as you add more heat, but um, why are there these random flat parts? And what's going on there? Okay, so um, by the end of today, you should be able to tell me what's happening at each section. So after this lecture, you should be able to tell me what's happening at each section, okay? All right, so to understand this, we're going to have to define these three things, a temperature, kinetic energy, and potential energy. So um, temperature, if you remember from the previous lectures, is the measurement of the movement of particles, right? And so the movement of particles is kinetic energy. So um, it's the measurement of kinetic energy. Okay? Kinetic energy is just energy due to movement. And then potential energy is stored energy. All right. Okay. So we just have to know that. Now remember, so um, one of the biggest things is now that you see, once you see temperature, don't think, I mean, it is heat, but think like, okay, they're starting, the particles are moving faster. All right. Uh, or if the, if the temperature is going down, okay, the particles are moving slower. Because temperature is the measurement of how fast these particles are moving. Okay. All right, so let's get to the heating curve. So if you're taking notes, I would use the whole page. Like, uh, because I'm going to diagram this whole um, chart, this whole graph. So, like, you could flip it off on its side uh, so it's landscape, and then you're going to draw it all out. So you always feel free to pause it so you can take notes. But I'm going to go ahead and talk about each part. So the first part we're going to talk about is you first want to label... Um, what's occurring. Like, um, so if you remember from the phase diagrams, we label each part like solid, liquid, and gas. And so it's helpful if we do that here. Um, and so what you're going to find out is um, these parts is when kinetic energy is changing. How do I know kinetic energy is changing? Well, what's changing during these parts? Temperature is changing, right? In the flat parts, uh, um, there's no t change in temperature, right? And so whenever temperature changes, well, what is temperature? Temperature is the measurement of kinetic energy. Well, kinetic energy is changing. So which parts represent kinetic energy? It's the parts where temperature changes. So anytime temperature changes, kinetic energy changes, Okay. Um, well, what about potential energy, the stored energy? Well, anytime it's flat, those are going to be potential energy. So potential energy is changing. Why is it not being measured? Well, please remember, temperature, which is here, is the measurement of kinetic energy. So anytime it changes, uh, kinetic energy changes. But potential energy is actually measured differently, so it's not measured through temperature. And so if it flattens out, Remember, the water or whatever substance is still being heated. So even, it's kind of weird because you would think, why would it flatline if heat is still being used or is still being given off? And so like, what we have to figure out now is what's exactly happening at the potential energy? Like, why is it flattening? All right, so what have we learned? We've learned um, 
that whenever temperature changes, that's a change in kinetic energy. And then whenever um, it doesn't change, but heat is still being added, that means potential energy, something's changing with the potential energy. All right, let's talk about the three phases now. So um, I guess I'll use green for this. So whenever kinetic energy is changing, what's happening is um, the, uh, um, the molecules are moving faster, but they're moving faster within their own state of matter. And so whenever you have three kinetic energies like we see, the one that is at the lowest temperature is going to be the solid. And then the one, so this whole part is solid. This whole part is liquid. And then this whole part is a gas. Okay? All right. So what do you think is happening then? I'll do that in purple. What do you think is happening here? Well, this part, the potential energy part, is the transition. It's the phase change. So, for example, this, the, the potential energy is, um, uh, this first potential energy here, is uh, if we're going this way, it would be the phase change between solid and liquid, and so this would be uh, melting, right? Now, if I went backwards, it would be freezing, right? And so this phase change, liquid to a gas, would be um, evaporation. One thing that's helpful for students is potential energy starts with a P, and phase change starts with a P as well. So I don't know if that helps, but... Um, just know that these flat lines is, is where potential energy is changing. Well, um, what's happening exactly? Um, so, so I've kind of diagrammed what each part is. Um, remember the flat parts are phase changes, the kinetic, uh, whenever the kinetic energy is changing, when temperature is changing, those are one of the three phases. But let's, let's, let, let's draw what's happening. <clears throat> So if we said that A to B is a solid, so this section is a solid, what's happening is you have these particles, and so heat is being added, and what's happening is they're starting to vibrate. They're starting to move. And so when they, as they start to move, they're still stuck together, but they're, like, vibrating. As they're starting to move, so I guess I could do this. They're starting to move we pick that up in terms of temperature because temperature is a measurement of movement. But they start to move at some point, they get to um, a point where they start melting. So we call this a melting point, right? So the melting point technically is, is this section. But what's happening here? At this point, um, it, let's, let's look between two particles. So between these two particles, we know there's an IMF, right? There's, like, imagine they're closer. I kind of went, I, I, and so, um, so they're closer and they're being, um, they're being held by an IMF, right? So there's an IMF bond here. There's an IMF interaction here. But during this time, the energy is not used to make them move faster. The energy is actually being used to break apart this IMF. So uh, the energy, this is where the energy is going. So why does it flatline? Well, um, initially the energy is being used to vibrate the molecules so they go faster, faster, faster. But at, at once they get to the melting point, they, they're still vibrating, but now the energy that the, as you heat this liquid or heat this solid, the energy is now being um, used to break apart um, this IMF or break apart these, these or weaken these, these, um, this IMF between these two particles. So that now, after all the interaction has been weakened, it continues on. And this is now a liquid, right? And so now you have these particles that are free to move. They're no longer stuck. And so they can move past each other. And they start moving fast, faster and faster and faster. Think about we're always adding heat to a point where they're ready to now boil or evaporate. Well, what do you have to do to evaporate? Well, the, these two that are stuck together and moving, they have to separate. So where does the energy, the energy is now being used not to make it go faster, but the energy is now being used to separate, to, to break it even further. So every time it, it flatlines, it's not, it, what happens is these particles can, um, 
they stop moving faster and faster and faster, and the energy is now used, uh, concentrated to, to break apart the IMF. And so now you have particles that are separate that are moving even faster. And then what happens here? Well, these particles, these gases, are now moving really fast past each other. Okay? So uh, if you didn't quite understand uh, what, what I was talking about, just think um, whenever you have a change in temperature, that, that energy that's being added is used to make it move faster. Whenever it flatlines, it, en the energy is used for the phase change itself, for the, the loosening of the IMF or the breaking of the IMF. Um, and so uh, even though energy is being added the whole time, it's being used differently. One, sometimes it's used during a phase change when it flatlines, and sometimes it's used for the particles to, to, move, to move faster. Okay? All right. Um, so um, there's two t uh, topics, heat of fusion and heat of vaporization. Um, and basically what it is, you might, uh, uh, vaporization is what, evaporation. So right here is what we call the heat of vaporization. And so heat is just like energy, right? So it, it's basically the heat of vaporization is the amount of energy needed to vaporize. And uh, or let's just say evaporate. And so heat of fusion is here. And this is the amount of energy or amount of heat needed to melt or, or yeah, let's just say to melt, okay? All right. And then you, uh, what's interesting is if you look at it and if you really understand what I'm trying to uh, explain here, like you'll notice like, hey, it takes less time to, to melt and more time to, to uh, vaporize. And if you think about it, it's actually um, going from a solid to liquid takes less time. And the reason is, is because um, all you're doing is loosening the, um, you're loosening the IMF. You're not, you're not getting rid of the IMF, you're loosening it so that they're no longer stuck together, but they're free to move. Whereas going from a liquid to gas requires more energy. Why? Because now you're actually breaking those bonds, right? You're actually breaking, um, you're breaking the, the IMF. And so separation is a lot harder than just like kind of loosening it up, right? And so that's why usually heat of vaporization is, requires a lot more energy. And in this graph, it requires, um, requires more time. All right, so um, what I was hoping to do was maybe give you some sample questions, um, and we can kind of go over um, each one as I go through the questions. So m hopefully um, what we can do is I'll um, ask the question, and then you pause, and you come up with an answer, and then press play, and, and then that way it can, we, you can kind of check your answers, okay? All right, so um, first question, um, let's go, I would like you to label the phases all right, uh, so go ahead and, and label the, 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 the phases. All right, so uh, each phase, so A would be your solid. Uh, C would be um, your liquid. Oops, liquid. And then E is gas, right? Okay. All right, uh, next question. Um, um, identify where uh, potential energy is changing. So uh, where is potential energy changing? It would be B and D, right? B and D is where the phase changes occur, so that's the, where, where the potential energy is changing. Okay. Next question, where is the kinetic energy changing? Well, kinetic energy is measured by temperature, so that would be A, C, and E, right? Uh, those are all parts where temperature is changing. If temperature is changing, temperature measures kinetic energy, so kinetic energy is, um, uh, uh, is, is changing as well. Uh, let's do a couple more questions. Um, next one, uh, I want you to find the melting point and the boiling point of this uh, substance. So the melting point, boiling point, go and press stop. Okay, um, so... If you remember, at, at, at whenever potential energy changes, it flatlines. So this is where it's melting. 
And this is where it's boiling or evaporating, right? So if you look carefully, the melting point is negative 60 degrees, and the boiling point or evaporation point is 60 degrees Celsius. Okay, so that's the melting. It's kind of weird, right, um, to have a melting point that low, negative 60 degrees Celsius, right? So this is uh, usually at room temperature, it's a liquid, right, with a really low melting point. All right, um, oh, let's do one more question. This question will, um, if you really understand this, I think that um, this will show that you do understand it. So um, what I want you to do is, at which point on this graph, at which point, you could put a dot, at which point would you expect to see exactly 50% gas and 50% liquid? Go ahead and press stop and come up with an answer. All right, so, um, Let's talk about this. So 50%, uh, where, where would you get exactly half liquid, half gas? Well, we know this This is ex pure liquid here, and this is pure gas, right? So whenever temperature is changing, it's going to be. And so as soon as it enters this phase, what is this phase? This is where it evaporates, right? Evaporation is the change from liquid to gas. Well, at this point right here, let me do it in red. At this point right here, it would be 100% liquid. It's like just started evaporating. 100% liquid, 0% gas, right? And at this point, it's it's just finished evaporation, so it's 0% liquid and 100% uh, gas, right? So 50-50 would be wherever you consider middle. That doesn't look like the middle to me, but, you know, it's close enough. So 50-50%, 50% here. Okay? All right. So um, I have uh, some homework, and then I'll post a key tomorrow for you to do. All right.